Well, we all have three things in common as we sit here this evening. Uh, one of them is that we've had a great opportunity tonight to listen to a lot of presenters with some great ideas and some more to come here very shortly. Uh, the second one, I'm either going to apologize or say thank you that you got to listen to my drivel for about six minutes. Uh, and lastly, as teachers and educators, uh, we've all had the experience of student teaching, an apprenticeship, a teacher in training, whatever you want to call it. We've all had the opportunity to work with a master in education. Uh, and I was blessed with having two extraordinary teachers down in Boise that pushed me to look for new ways to meet the needs of our clientele. Uh, Mr. Anderson, who you uh, heard from earlier this evening, uh, was an inspiration to me over the past year when I ran into some videos on him and what he's done in the classroom in Bozeman. Uh, so what a flipped classroom is, is it's a 180 degree shift in what traditional education is. Instead of having instruction done at school and then the practice done at home, we just switch those. Instruction is done through either podcasts or some screencasts, an example of one that the students that I have would watch, uh, no more than 10 minutes long at home where they would answer a couple questions just to get their wheels rolling, and they would come in the next day for the practice. Uh, some benefits that I've run into, and it's not just benefits I've seen, but also uh, teachers who have employed a flipped classroom around the country, is an increase in student interaction. And what I mean by that is not just interaction between the students, uh, when I was in the insurance industry in Seattle, my boss has told me there is one surefire way to get to know your clientele. It's to communicate with them. It's to talk with them. Lecture, like I'm doing to you all right now, is the complete opposite of that. I'm talking to you. Uh, and they're, they're right. I mean, it was, it's an amazing thing. It would flip the classroom. I now have more time to interact with the student, to talk with them on a day-to-day -day basis. If they're struggling with something, I can provide immediate support. If they find it easy, I can provide them some more challenge, something I wasn't able to do as well in the past. Uh, and something that really blew my mind was about two weeks ago, I received an email from a parent. And in short, it said this, uh, thank you for posting the videos online. I'm able to finally help my son with the math at home. I'm learning along with him. That's a huge connection right there. I've got an advocate at home now, and they're making a connection with each other, something I would not have been able to do if I'd kept the practice in, I give the lecture, it's here with me, come to see me if you need something. They have access to that information 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. You kind of get the picture. It's going to be there when they need it. Ease of access. Pacing is an, has been a surprise to me more than anything else. It, I can challenge those students, and there are students, at least half a dozen in both the math classes I'm doing this in, that have pushed themselves beyond what I was expecting them to do. They're well beyond where the rest of the class is. I wouldn't have been able to do this without cloning myself, and I'm pretty sure not even my wife would want that. Uh, and, but there are obviously some drawbacks. For every hill, there's a valley. Uh, technological issues and lack of resources, I'm not going to get into these too much tonight. Uh, saw a bumper sticker once that said, a clean desk is a sign of a messy mind. My mind is spotless. Uh, those of you that know me uh, and have been in the classroom, uh, a little organizationally challenged. I uh, have some great colleagues that help me out with that quite a bit. Uh, and the piece that I really need to start working on is a meaningful practice for the students, not just a drill and kill when they get back into the classroom. So real quick, I want to take you through what a typical day might look like in the class. Uh, like I said, instruction done at home, a 10-minute video or podcast where there'd be two questions. Students would come in the next day and they'd text their answers in, and that's a totally different story uh, that goes along with that. Uh, but in five minutes' time, I could get the students' responses, analyze the data, and provide a reteach. That would take upwards of 50 minutes to do that in a traditional classroom. That provides me 45 minutes on a day-to-day -day basis to work with students, something I'd, I'd, I can't live without now. Uh, not just multiple choice questions, also some open response, and it was this time where I felt like I was Casey at the bat ready to knock that thing out of the park, and then that curveball came. <laughs> and it, was, it, can, it threw me. I wasn't sure exactly what to do, but luckily there's always a student there to provide me some support, and they may be up here in a couple of years talking about how to integrate sex ed and algebra. Uh, not sure how that'll work, but... <laughs> But to drop back to the apprenticeship that we've all shared, and we had that practicum in the classroom, let's take that and let's turn that around. 
go back to a traditional classroom where it's like this. They're going to sit there, and it might look something like this in a, in a middle school at least. Okay, tonight, this is what's going to happen. Here are the level upon layer and layer and layer of what's really important. And then when you go home tonight, here are some of the hurdles that you might run into. Okay? Now, don't forget, this is going to benefit you in the future. This will help you out in finding that career that you've always wanted. All right? Hey, uh, by the way, you got a D right now in that preteen tradition of standing on opposite sides of the gym where Sue or Bobby's waiting, you're waiting for them to ask you to dance. You're not going to be able to go if you don't pass that quiz over the lecture that I just gave you today. And by the way, as they're rushing out the door, 1 through 50 tonight. Hey, businesses don't operate the way they did 100 years ago. They don't even operate the way they did 25 years ago. That's what we seem to be doing in education. And when something goes wrong, like the curveball I was throwing, we jump back to the, and quote from Grace Murray Hopper, most damaging phrase in the language is, it's always been done that way. It's not working, I'm going to move it to something that's more comfortable. We need to find different ways to meet the needs of our clientele, and that's the citizens of the world. Thank you.